Forest City Church. Happy New Year! Happy New Year! We've missed you guys, and I'm super excited that right here, right now, we get to launch into this digital experience together and worship and go deep into God's Word together. Steve is going to teach, and he's prepared a super awesome word for us. We're going to dive right into the book of Luke together here and now, so stay tuned. But first, I want to pray and just invite God into whatever He wants to do over the next few minutes. So would you pray with me from wherever you find yourself? Father, we thank you that this is a new year, it's a new day that we get to go deep into your word and your presence together. And so I pray right now, wherever we are, that we would hear you clearly, that we would experience more of who you are and what you're like as we open up your word. We love you, we honor you. It's in your name that we pray today, amen. You guys, I'm super excited about whatever God's gonna do, and here it is. Jesus, we're waking up to your worth. You're the treasure of all of heaven and earth mm. And it's my desire to give you everything Can you hear it? This is my offering, oh it's my offering Come on, take it out, come on! This is the sound of another broken body
Happy New Year, Four City. Man, I'm so grateful for the Christmas services that we had, for all of the volunteers who just gave uh, their time uh, to welcome so many people who stepped back into the church for the very first time. Uh, they were just incredible services. And, you know, we just wanted to actually honor our staff, our volunteers, and do a New Year's message via digital. And I'm really excited because this year is going to be different. Um, I'm, I'm really, really expectant for what's going to happen every Sunday starting next week for 2023. And here's why. We are going to be walking through two books of the Bible for the entire year. It's all going to be grounded in both the Gospel of Luke and Luke's second book, the book of Acts. Now, what's amazing that, that you might not know is that Luke and Acts really... Um, is made up of like 26% of the New Testament. So between these kind of books, there's a quarter of the New Testament. There's 24 chapters in the book of Luke. There's 28 chapters in the book of Acts. And what our team has been really praying through is saying, man, what if every week we could, across all Rockford and Elgin and the Northwest suburbs and beyond, just spend a week and one chapter of Luke, and then the next week, the next chapter of Luke. And the entire year goes through these two books. What I think about Luke is Luke is just writing this gospel, but you learn about the power of prayer. You learn about the power of Christ. You learn about the person of Christ. You learn about God's heart for the poor. And what you're gonna see really in the book of Luke is an invitation for every one of us to truly be disciples. Talmudim in Hebrew, apprentices of Jesus. That's our whole prayer for this year, is that we would actually be disciples, that we would want to know this book, that we would want to know Jesus, that we would have encounters with Jesus. We wouldn't just know facts about Jesus. We'd actually know him. I mean, I, I can tell you, February 17th, 1963, there was a guy, a child that was born in Brooklyn, New York. By the age of two, he moves to North Carolina. I could tell you about his family. I could tell you about how he loved the game of baseball. I could tell you about how he loved washing his, his, car, his, his grandfather's car with his grandpa. I could, I could tell you all about this kid. I could tell you about how he went to Laney High School. I could tell you about as a sophomore, he got cut from his high school basketball team. I could tell you as a junior, he made varsity. I could tell you as a senior, decided to go to the University of North Carolina. I could tell you as a freshman, he went to the University of North Carolina, hits the game-winning shot against Georgetown. I could tell you how he was third pick overall in the NBA draft behind Akeem Olajuwon and Sam Bowie. I could tell you how he won the Rookie of the Year. I could tell you how he hurt his leg his second year. I could tell you how many points he averaged how he was a master on defense. I could tell you about his gambling problem. I could tell you about his shoes. I could tell you so many facts about Michael, Jeffrey, Jordan. But if you ask me, Steve, have you ever met him? I'd be like, no, never, never met him. At a, not at all, never, never, never even been close to him. You know what we call those people? Stalkers. And that's what many of us do. We know all of these facts about Jesus, but do we actually know him? And this, from our teaching team and from our staff, is we want you to know Jesus. And in the book of Luke, you're going to know the power of Christ. You're going to learn the parables of Christ. And you're going to discover the passion of Christ. And the power, man, what he did, the healings, the invitation in the kingdom of God, the parables, what he taught. And, and it's going to shape how you see as God sees yourself, our world, and who our neighbor actually is. And then you're going to encounter the passion that he had, the willingness to actually die for each and every one of us. And I'm telling you what, when we get to Luke, it's not just stopping there. We're then going to go to Acts, and Acts is about a group of people who really wanted to empower, be empowered by the Spirit to find that Spirit's power to live as the hands and feet and the people of Christ in the midst of persecution, in the midst of struggle. Not just know facts about Jesus, but actually embody him. And I'm going to tell you what, man, what our team has planned for this year, 
one chapter a week, walking through Luke and Acts. This is going to be a year to call all of us who call Four City home to the heart of discipleship, to the heart of being disciples, not of a political party, not of an agenda, but of a Middle Eastern rabbi named Jesus Christ. And if you come every week, I'm going to invite you to bring your Bible. I'm going to come, I invite you to come and come expect it, whether in Elgin, whether in Rockford, to dive into Luke, to wake up in the mornings on a Monday or Tuesday and begin to go, man, we're in Luke 4. I'm going to be reading Luke 4 this week and just see what the Spirit does. Because I want you to discover the power. I want you to know the parables. And I want you to understand the passion that Christ had. But you know what's amazing? Is Luke and Acts, it's a biography. Luke's a doctor. He's a physician. Paul's doctor. And Luke's been traveling with Paul, but he, he knows this man named Theophilus. And, and many times we miss this, but right in the very beginning of Luke, in the very beginning of Acts, Luke details who he's writing this to. This biography on Christ for one man. And just think about this for a second. What if you took all of your experiences, what you've come to know to be true, all of your theology, everything that you've known or experienced about the power and the parables and the passion of Christ, and you thought of one person in your life? That's what Luke does. And he writes 52 chapters, 26% of the New Testament for one person. I'm thinking about this. I can't seem to get it out of my mind. Is that Theophilus, many believe, was a Gentile ruler, had some sense of power. He's referred to in Luke 1 as the most excellent. And that, that phrase, most excellent, is only used three times in the New Testament. And two of those times are used regarding political leaders. So here's this Gentile that Luke's met. And Luke writes this. I just love this. Many, verse 1 of Luke 1, have undertaken to draw up an account of the things that have been fulfilled among us, just as they were handed down to us by those who from the first were eyewitnesses and servants of the word. With this in mind, since I myself have carefully investigated everything from the beginning, I, meaning Luke, too decided to write an orderly account for you, most excellent Theophilus, so that you may know the certainty of the things you have been taught. Just think about the time Luke spent. So that he may know with certainty the things that he had been taught. And so this whole year, what I want to ask you is that each week you would go on this journey with us to read a chapter of Luke and a chapter of Acts. And every week that you show up, you come, you bring your Bible, you come ready, expecting to learn. But here's the third to make this year wildly different is who's your Theophilus? Who's the person each week that you can be praying for that maybe God might present an opportunity for you to invite them to come join you for a service in Rockford or join you in a service at Elgin? But the more that we dive into this book and discover the power and the parables and the passion, it doesn't stop with us. It's always going to flow through us by the power of the Spirit and lead us to our own Theophiluses. And the question is, will we have the courage to invite, to share, to see, to care, to love, and to bear witness to what Christ's power, what Christ's teachings, and Christ's passion in us has done within us? It's going to be a remarkable year. I'm so excited. Come ready next week as we kick off this Luke and Acts series, all for 2023. Come ready and maybe see if this is the week that you can bring your Theophilus to what Kairos is going to do. Grace and peace. He who was before there was light Walked across the pages of time He who made every living thing Behold him he who heard humanity's cry left his throne to wake as a child. He
he became like the least of us. Behold him, Jesus, Son of God, Messiah, the Lamb, the Holy Liar. Oh, be still and behold him. Behold him. He hung his head 
for me he died uh, they hung him high hey God they stretched him wide hey. he hung his head uh, for me and you he died right there but that's not how uh, the storm Hey, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. I don't know about you, but just listening to that message from Steve made me so expectant and excited for what 2023 could possibly hold. So I just want to take a minute and ask, what is it for you? What are you excited about? What are you expectant that God might do in this year? Let's just pause and think about that together. It also really makes me excited to think about all that's going to happen in the life of our church this year. And one of those things you already know about is this seventh floor magazine that we have for you. Here's why this matters. It's a tool for us to get connected to our story as a church, where we've come from, where we're going. And there's a 14 day devotional that's a really practical way to stay connected to how God might allow us and invite us to set tables in our lives for our neighbors and even in our church community. So if you don't have this, stop by the Connect Point at Rockford or Elgin on a Sunday and it is there for you. And there is a QR code with a link to the last Four City Worship Project. We're super proud of and super excited and just hopeful that you will experience God in your everyday life as you listen to these songs that we've crafted together. So that is there for you. Another thing that we're really excited about, we've talked about havens and havens are just low walled spaces, easy accessible spaces in our church where you can connect with people and just have some fun together around an activity. One of those is sports. And this spring, winter, whatever you want to call it, this year as we turn a new leaf, there are two sports we have available for you, soccer and pickleball at the Rockford campus. You guys, I am so excited. I wanted to be Venus and Serena as a kid. Didn't happen, but this is my chance and it's probably your chance too. So pickleball, accessible tennis for me and you, we can do it. Go to our link on our website and register for those sports. We're super excited that all the info you need is going to be there. And January 4th at 6 30 p.m. at the Rockford campus in the chapel is going to be our first worship and prayer service of the year. Both campuses, everyone's invited. I'm so expectant about starting the new year together in worship and prayer and seeking the Lord for what he wants to do in us, in our community, and just thanking him for all that he's done. And it's just going to be a really sweet time. And I'm really excited to pursue his presence with you. So hope to see you there. Last but not least, Forest City family, there are two ways that you can continue to stay connected with what's happening in the life of our church. The first is our weekly email newsletter, and the second is social media. And as always, thank you so much for tuning in, for being present to hear God's word for us and just connect. We are so grateful for you. We love you, and we're just super excited about everything that God has for us this year. Have a great day, week, and we'll see you soon. Oh, yeah. And Happy New Year.